Hi, my name is Dean Tissett. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Albemarle County Public Schools. In my capacity as a Chief Operating Officer, I'm called upon to make a number of very difficult decisions. The most difficult decision I get involved with is those that involve closing of schools or delaying schools because of winter weather. Albemarle County itself poses a great number of challenges in making the best possible decision from great differences in topography, we have mountains and flatlands, Difference in roadways, we have high speed inter, uh, interstate roads like Route 64 and a number of small windy rural roads that are not even paved. So it's a very complex decision. Adding to that complexity is that we often have to make a decision based on a winter weather forecast, not an actual event. And obviously whenever we're making a decision on a forecast where things are not yet happening, it's problematic whether the forecast is going to be accurate and our decision will be the best possible. To help you understand better about how these decisions are made, I'm going to introduce Jim Foley, the Director of Transportation Services, to explain the process that we follow. Thank you, Dean. The priority in the Transportation Department is the safety of our students and staff. And not just the students that ride our buses, but also the students and parents that, that drive in in their own vehicles. Uh, teenage drivers don't have a lot of experience driving, especially in inclement weather conditions. As a matter of fact, riding a school bus is eight times safer than parent transportation and over 40 times safer than teenage transportation. In the transportation department, we monitor weather forecasts many days in advance. We consult weather sites, the National Weather Service, local police, and the 911 center. And another key member of our team are the snow patrollers. We have six snow patrollers that head out in the morning and the snow patrollers must be experienced drivers that, that know the county well, be dependable, but also they can't currently be a school bus driver because we want our school bus drivers to be rested. With that, I'd like to introduce Lewis Jordan, a, a key member of our snow patrol team. Hi, I'm Lewis Jordan. As a snow patroller, our job starts at 2 in the morning. We usually get a call around 2, and we have uh, six of us. And there's two from the northern side of the county, two from the southern side of the county, and two from the western side of the county. Our routes are usually an hour long, and we're all furnished a four-wheel drive vehicle from the county. Uh, we start out and we're checking various types of, of roads. We're checking the main roads, your hard surface roads, your non-paved roads. Uh, we're looking for ice, snow accumulation. Uh, we're looking to see if the roads have been salted or plowed. But not only are we looking at the roads, but we're also looking for down trees, low hanging limbs, and down power lines. Also, we're checking to see the turnaround spots for the buses because you definitely don't want to get a bus into an area that you can't get it out of. And then we have one central location, a person that we report to, and we usually try to do that by four in the morning. And on some mornings, if there's a two-hour delay, we're asked to go out for the second time to reassess the roads that we've already looked at. So our, morning, our day starts really early in the morning and we continue on all day. Thanks, Jim and Lewis. Those were great explanations of the processes that you follow when we're considering whether we have to delay or close schools due to winter weather. Weather forecasting has come a long way during the course of my career and we are getting much more accurate forecasts than used to be the case. But the reality is we would always prefer to make a decision based on actual events and not based on a forecast. We recognize when we make these decisions that we need to give timely information to our community so they can plan around what they need to do to handle a change in the school schedule. Whenever possible, we try to make a decision the day before so there's plenty of advance notice, but often that's not the case. As you heard from Lewis, he has to get out early in the morning in some cases. We gather last second information and we try to make a decision by 5 a.m. so we can get all the information out to the community by about 5.30 a.m. Please rest assured that the decisions we make are always primarily based on the safety of our staff and students, but we do take into consideration the fact that when we close or delay schools, it does disrupt the lives of many family members, so they're not made lightly. Thank you.